Hello, Cameron Ford from Ford K9. As we've been developing and doing more of our video series, we've been getting lots more questions, whether it be from the K9's Talking Sense podcast to our YouTube channel. We have heard many of your questions, one of which we'll talk about today, which is how do we do odor containment? Now, what I'll say is there is no perfect way to do this. There's no perfect system that reduces all contamination. We are always gonna deal with a level of contamination. What we want to do is mitigate that contamination as much as possible. So one of the first things that we do is we put on gloves. The type of gloves that we like to use are gonna be gloves that are powder free. They are nitrile type gloves. These gloves are what keep other things like if it had powder you'd have powder all over stuff so you want the nitrile powder free gloves as you see here so that's our first step the next thing that we like to do is we want to keep our odor as safe as possible and one of the tools that we use is a tad a tad is just a jar that has a membrane in it which i will show you that membrane right there allows odor out, but odor or contamination does not come back in. What's really amazing about these, and we'll do another video on this, is these tads can be fully uh, put underwater, can also be buried. There's a lot of options you can do with a tad. And as we go into tads, tads are great because it's when it comes to your substance, it's about what your um, surface area is not always about weight. And we'll talk about more of that later on. So this is a tad. Tads come in a couple different sizes. So we have another one here, just like so. So tads allow us to have, again, some options, but the downside is, this is, I'll take the cap off again on this one, same thing, is the size. This isn't something that you would hide in a very small place. So you do lose a little bit of a hide location based on using a tad but a tad is one of the options. So if our substance is in a tad, one of the things that we can use next is called Wattman paper. Wattman paper is a sterile type of uh, absorbent material that you commonly see them used by TSA to swab your suitcases or things like that. Wattman paper, this size in which we'll put the size down in the show notes with a link to where you can buy them on Amazon or on our website you put your Wattman paper right perfectly over that tad. What works nicely is whatever's in this tad will then start being absorbed by that Wattman paper. A really good little extra effect. So that Wattman paper can be, then be secured inside our tad just like that. So that's one layer right there. Another tool we like to use for absorbing odor and that is disposable but does get numerous uses out of is get scent tubes. Get scent tubes are tubes that are designed to absorb odor. What they look like is this. It's a small like straw type material that is designed to absorb odor from the inside here. So what we like to do is we put these uh, get scent tubes in let's say our glass jar that might hold whatever substance that we've placed in here so like this one's our bed bug one and the bed bug one would be in here these get scent tubes inside this would actually go in and start absorbing whatever the bed bugs or whatever substance is i would have in my glass jar so one of the other tools that we use because many of you guys see us commonly use the scent wheel or odor lineups, things of that nature. These 10 ounce dredge shaker cans make a great tool to utilize for our detection training because whatever we put in here can be protected by the uh, can itself, which is also stainless steel. So in this case, if I wanted to put in my tad, I could simply take my tad place it inside the, uh, I'll remove the Wattman paper on this one since I had to show it to you guys. I would put my tad directly inside the shaker can and it fits perfectly within this. I just put the cap back on like so. And then this would then go inside whatever be my wheel, 
my scent lineup, what have you, this is, is another great tool to use for that. What's nice is, if I'm gonna do this for storage, I just simply open this up, take out my tad, put my cap back on, drop it right back in there. Now I've got a couple different layers to protect my training material. So I now have this, I then go to our glass jars. These are 32 ounce glass jars that are designed wide mouth glass jars because what works well is now I can place this inside here. This goes inside here, I can screw this cap on, nice and secure. But I wanna cover a difference here real quick. A lot of people like to get mason jars. Mason jars are also a good tool but it matters what type of lid you get. So typically, mason jars come with this two-piece lid, and what happens is this two-piece lid system, it leaks because there's leakage between this system here and here versus having your one sealed lid, like I just showed you a second ago, by utilizing this, there's a way that it could leak through here. So this is why we don't like to use these lids, but we want to use these lids, which are one solid piece, and they have a lining inside there that keeps it from leaking out odor. Anything that you use frequently, such as these, over time, you may need to change out your lid. So changing out your lid will allow you to have the best way to contain odors so your odors aren't leaking out and talking to each other. So the next step that we have, potentially depending on what you're using, is called a metallized or mylar bag, as seen right here. You can get these from Psy Canine or you can order them online, wherever you want. These mylar bags are designed to, or anti-static bags. They're used frequently in types of electronic type work, so you can stick your substance into here. But the problem with, with these bags is, again, usage. The more you use them, you're opening and closing this Ziploc and it begins to break down the seal. But in the case of, let's say, being a external barrier where I can put my TAD inside this, this now becomes another option that allows my materials to stay as safe as possible and reduce contamination. So now I have my Mylar bag with a TAD or whatever substance is in there but the biggest thing, again, to consider is you want, if something's in a Mylar bag, you want it to have a, another layer of, or barrier inside that. So that's why the TAD works well with these types of setups. So we have our jar set up. We have our Mylar bag and TAD set up. But now we need the next thing. This is for transportation and, and taking it around is your very own ammo can, which you can use which is pretty easy to deal with. They're fairly easy to carry and transport, and there's even variations where you can put them all into one case. But here's the thing. I like to keep, when possible, have my ammo cans only contain the odor specific. So this would go into here. This belongs, whatever this odor is, belongs to this ammo can. Can I, let's say, put multiple in here? Yes, I can. As long as it's, I got a good lid, a good seal, this reduces contamination, especially if you have multiple items. What I don't want to do is put in a different odor and a different odor because there is the possibility that this may be leaking and I don't know and it could start contaminating this one but I can put multiple bottles of the same substance or set up in a different way, different types of containment in this jar, let's say, versus what's in this jar. But they all fit into my one ammo can. And it locks down and becomes nice and airtight. So this is what we like to use at Ford Canine. The steps I mentioned are there for a reason. The joke is it's kind of like that Russian doll system where you have open up one layer, then another layer, and another layer. But the more layers we have, we are helping in reducing contamination. This kind of setup is for my certification 
or my testing kit or my initial imprint kit. I also have a kit that I will have in say these ammo cans that is more contaminated that may have other distracting odors or other mixtures in it. That's fine for our normal routine training to expose the dog to mixtures. Mixtures are important so the dog understands despite contamination or other factors, I still have to locate that target odor. So always look at it this way. If you're a trainer, you want to have a system that has your system that's more pristine and set for initial imprinting and testing, which is what I described here. I would still store my training odors, the ones that are more contaminated, in a system like this strictly because it keeps me following the same protocols and keeps me from having um, potential cross-contamination or mix-ups between my, my good stuff and my dirty stuff, if that makes sense. I also label my ammo cans so I always know what's inside of them. I color code them or I label them so it's really quick and easy to determine what I'm grabbing for training. So, I hope that answers your questions. There will be more videos on the TADS. There will be more videos on the Get Scent Tubes and how we use them. And, as usual, please keep emailing your questions, any of the comments you have, any ideas you have, and please, as they always say on YouTube, like and subscribe by clicking down below. Thank you again.